Welcome back to Chem 101. In the previous videos, we took a look at how we determine the values of quantum numbers, uh, such as the values of n, l, ml, and we didn't talk about ms, but we'll refer to that in this video. And we also looked at assigning electron configurations to atoms and ions. So if this doesn't look familiar to you, maybe jump back and see some of those previous videos. This is also showing atomic orbitals, which we discussed briefly in the electron configuration video, but it helps us illustrate two points that I want to make here, and it also helps us understand why certain electrons get certain quantum numbers. Um, so let's do that. Now I've taken here the sulfur 2 minus ion. So sulfur's electron configuration already shows sulfur's uh, total electrons. Now. Um, the four quantum numbers that we're interested in are four unique numbers that can be assigned to any electron. And so no two electrons will have the same set of quantum numbers. So let's take, for example, the case of sulfur's last electron that it gained. Imagine a situation where sulfur had 3p5 and then it gained that last electron, making it 3p6. Now I want to put in those electrons, and I've already kind of filled up to the 2p orbital. Now we need to put in these last eight electrons. So uh, one up and one down, and then we go one up and one up and one up. The reason I didn't double up here, of course, if you remember Hun's rule, says that when electrons are filling into orbitals, they will always go into an unoccupied shell before they end up pairing up. So since now we are paired or everything is occupied now we start pairing up electrons and this is the fifth one in and this is the sixth one in so I'll just kind of circle this electron that's the one that we want to write the quantum numbers for okay now let's determine the quantum number n n is going to be the principal energy shell where we find this electron and remember n is determined by this number here so the principal quantum energy level is 3 for this electron. So we would put a 3 here. Now, what's L going to be? L is determined, or in another way to say it, L determines the type of subshell we have. So since this is P, we already know that L then must equal 1. When L is 0, we get the S shells. When L is 2, we get the D shells. All right, well, what is ml? And this is why I like to show out the orbital diagram. Because remember, the values of ml can be everything from minus 1 to plus 1. So since this electron went into the plus 1 orbital, we can assign it a 1. Now, these energy levels are arbitrary. Uh, sorry, they're degenerate. And the, to say that it goes into this one over this one is arbitrary. But, so that everyone is on the same page, the Aufbau principle shows us how we can do this so that everybody agrees on it. So we'll, when we fill them up in this order, we always go up, 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 then down, 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 and we'll always go from the lowest ML number to the highest ML number. Okay, so since now we get to the fourth quantum number, this one's actually determined by the spin of the electron. And the way we, we sort of um, relay that information is just saying that the electron can be up or down. Now this is something, a property of electrons that only appears when we put it in a magnetic field and it'll cause the electron to orient with either the up or the down type direction with the field. Now one of those energy levels is higher than the other, against the field is higher than with the field. But some population of electrons will occupy both of these energy states. And so we just define these as a plus one, uh, sorry, plus one half or a minus one half. And when it is up, we give it a plus one half. When the electron is down, we give it a minus one half. This is just a quantum number to, dis to differentiate between these two electrons. And I'll illustrate that in one uh, moment. What am, I, what am I writing here? Plus one half or minus one half. Okay. Now let's say that we were interested in the fifth electron, the one that actually, oh that's not true, 
this is the fifth electron. What if we were interested in the one, two, third up electron? Well, we would write an almost identical set of quantum numbers for this electron. We would say n is 3, l is 1, ml is 1. But the difference here is that it is the up electron. So it would get a 1 half instead of a minus 1 half. So you can see no two electrons are ever going to have the same exact four quantum numbers. Let's do one more. Let's look at nitrogen. Now nitrogen only has seven electrons. Up, down, up, down, up. Now remember, unoccupied orbital, Hund's rule. Up, up. All right, and let's say that we're interested in the third electron that went into this. So we're interested in, to, in the first electron that went into this 2s subshell. Now, being the third electron, let's assign a set of four quantum numbers to it. The first quantum number is n, determined by the principal energy level. The second quantum number is l, determine, determines the type of subshell, in this case s. When we have an L is zero, ML is automatically zero, there's nothing to write up there. And then is it the first electron in, the up electron, or is it the second electron in, the down electron? In this case we're going for the third, not the fourth, so this will be a one half. This is how we assign quantum numbers to electrons. To, cap, to, to recap, you want to start off with a correct electron configuration. That means if you're writing the ion nitrogen 3 minus, you want to make sure that this includes all of those electrons so that you can very accurately know which orbitals you're going to use to then assign quantum numbers. Should I show you a D shell? Let me show you a D shell very quickly. Imagine that we built on this shell here the 3P moves on to the 4s, and that moves on to the 3d. The d is going to have five positions, and if you were trying to assign the ml number, we would say minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. And so you could get ml by using orbital diagrams. All right, so in this video, we looked at how do you actually assign four unique quantum numbers to electrons? We talked about Hund's rule. You can't put electrons into the same shell uh, until they are all unpaired or all filled up, and then we start to pair them up. That's when Pauli exclusion principle tells us they have to be oppositely spinned. And by convention, we always say up, 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 then down, down, down. Uh, and lastly, we looked at I think we got it. Feels good. See you next time.